Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Sunset Sailboat and I'm gonna be sipping on some green tea here. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, chrome orange, fire red, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors too if you like, but that's what I'll be using. Uh, for my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk, a very small one at that. <laughs> you can use a bigger one if you want, but I'm using this one. Then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint, and I'll even throw in the paper towel for you. So that's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown, orange, yellow, white, and red. So how I'm, oh, and yeah, I was gonna say and brown, but I already said brown. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm bringing my sky down about three quarters of the way down the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers down at the bottom of my sky. So to know where a quarter of the way is, you can kind of just eyeball your halfway spot from the top to the bottom, and then just go about halfway between here and here. And that's gonna give you about a quarter of the way. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just somewhere in that vicinity. Then for me, I can use my brush as a measuring tool to mark it with my finger. And then I go over to the other side, and I'm gonna do a mark at about a similar height. I think that was a little low for me. Let's just go back again. Yeah, a little bit higher. There we go, somewhere in through there. And then how I'm gonna do this for my color transition down my sky. I'm not worried about my sun right now. We're gonna put that on later. So I'm gonna go from really dark at the top, predominantly top left. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter, really light in through here, and then I'm gonna transition back down into dark as we go right towards that horizon line. So I'm gonna call out the colors as I use them, but I'm gonna say them initially so you can kind of have a good idea. I'm gonna go brown, to orange, to yellow, to white, back to orange, then red, then brown. And I'll be using white along the way as well, so I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm starting with just brown paint on my brush. I'm gonna be using a left to right type of brush stroke. You can crisscross it a little bit. Sometimes that makes it easier to get these colors to kind of flow together with one another. I'm gonna do quite a bit of this area up at the top with just brown to start even coming down this left hand side, gonna use a bunch of brown. I may end up doing a second coat on my sky, but right now I'm just kind of getting it on here to see how these colors are gonna transition with one another. The next um, 
color combination I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up brown plus orange on my brush at the same time. And this is going to start transitioning into the orange type of color. I'm not going to pick up brown again. I'm just picking up orange now. And this is going to get it to go even more of a dramatic type of look. And I'm going kind of in a little bit of a diagonal pattern at the moment. Right now I'm going to pick up yellow and white and orange on my dirty brush all at the same time. And this is going to get this orange to start to transition into my lighter area where I'm going to have white. My, my canvas is making a lot of noise today. <laughs> Bumping into my easel, I can hear it. Um, this is going to help me to get this color to transi just transition just a little bit more. Now I'm going to pick up white and yellow without washing my brush. And what's going to happen at this point is I'm not going to wash my brush and the brown and any other color that I have on my brush is going to start to work its way off onto my canvas. So I will get a natural transition from all of these colors that I'm doing in a progressive order because I haven't washed my brush. It's going to allow it to just the darker colors to work their way off and it's going to get it to give me a more natural type of a blend to it. And you can, of course, make yours as light or as dark as you want. Once I get into this middle area, I think I'm going to put just a little bit more brown in this color combination so it's not too, too light for me. There we go. And once I get about halfway down my canvas, this is where I'm going to start the thought process that I'm going to start to bring in the yellows and the orange and the red to transition it back to being dark at the bottom of the horizon line. So I'm just kind of getting this to really work its way in together, maybe just completing this um, area in through here with a little bit more of my lighter mixture. And I feel like right about now is when I'm going to start to introduce the, the orange into it. So I'm going to pick up white with a little bit of yellow and orange on my brush at the same time so I can start to get these colors to work into one another. And now I'm just going to kind of go back and forth left to right. You may um, want to still do that crisscross if you want to, but it's totally up to you. Down at the bottom, I think I'm going to have a like a softer kind of look as it's transitioning into the horizon. So now I'm just picking up orange and yellow. My white is working its way off of my brush at this point. Maybe a little bit more yellow so it transitions nice into this orangey color. And I like to, as I'm doing these gradients, kind of work my way back up into the previous section just to get them to really talk well together as they're drying. And now I'm going to start picking up um, orange and red. So if you have a lot of white left on your brush, it might make these colors really soft and muted. So what I would suggest is either washing and drying your brush or just giving it a good squeeze in your paper towel. So that way when you go to pick up the orange and red, it will really be nice and, and um, dominant and not soft. So I have orange and red on my brush at the same time right now. And I'm bringing this down close to where my horizon line is going to be, making sure that it talks to that previous colored section that we just put on. And now I'm just picking up red paint and it's going to get really nice and dark as it's coming right down towards this horizon line. And once I'm bringing it all the way down to the horizon line, once I've got it down here and it's nice and blended with that orange, now I'm going to pick up brown and put the brown right at the bottom of this horizon line. So something like this. And then I'll get it to blend in with that red. I'm not going too high up when it comes to blending it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably let my canvas dry, see if I want to do another layer on it. You might want to do another layer just to smooth it out or get the, the gradients the way that you want. So if you choose to do that, just let it dry and do another layer on top of it. We are going to be with the same process as the first time. We are going to be using the large brush for the next step. So you'll want to wash it and dry it and just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the base coat for our water on. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are black, brown, red, orange, and yellow. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start up at the top with a horizon line with black paint. Then I'm going to transition to my lighter and brighter colors down at the bottom. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of black paint on my brush. You do not need a ton. This is really just going to get you that really dark horizon line so we can see the, um, the sky separate from the water itself. And it doesn't even have to be super straight because we're going to do just a, a nice soft kind of horizon line. So I'm just bringing my brush gently across like this making it blend in with my um, my horizon line a little bit. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting a nice soft line in there. You're gonna have a big boat that's gonna distract on the left side, so, and a big sun that's gonna take away the focus on the right side, so you don't need that to be perfect. Just nice and soft. So I'm just going back and forth so it kind of fades into that. Now I'm going to pick up brown and red without washing my brush. So I'm picking up some brown and a little bit of red without washing my brush and I'm going to get this black line to start transitioning down into my my water. So I'm just going left to right and if you had a ton of black paint on your brush still and all you're seeing right now is just black, then that means you should probably wash and dry your brush because um, otherwise the black can really easily just take over. So if you're not seeing any red or brown at this point, you should wash and dry your brush and start with red and brown. And then what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm just picking up red. And the red is gonna take up a real large amount of area on my on my canvas, but you can see I have these little streaks of darkness from the black that is still a little bit on my brush and a little bit of that brown that I had. And again, if you're feeling it's too dark or it's not lightening up fast enough for you, you could certainly wash and dry your brush. I'm bringing some more red. I just picked up red and I can still see some of my little streaks of the darkness on my water, which I'm really okay with because I wanted to transition down into a lighter color coming down. So this is how I like to do it because the darkness from that previous color just naturally works its way off of my brush and gives me the gradient that I'm looking for. So now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush again is I'm picking up red and orange. So I've got red and orange and this is gonna start to again transition more towards the lighter um, area down at the bottom. I'm not going for lightness like I have in the sky. This is going to be a little, much darker tone. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up just orange paint. And I'm feeling at this point that I am not, I still have too much black on my brush. So I am actually gonna dip my brush in my paper or in my cup to get some of that black off and just give it a good squeeze on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna pick up some orange and yellow to finish out the bottom of my sky, or my water. So orange and yellow is the last color combination that I'm putting down in my, at the bottom of my water. And you can see that it's not much um, lighter than the sky, but it is, it's not lighter at all than the sky, but what it is is it's a deeper, richer tone, which is gonna add a beautiful reflection when we go to um, put all of the details in. And then we are going to be using our, we're gonna use our chalk for the next step. So once you've got this layer of your water on, you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're drawing an outline for our sun and its reflection. So what I'm gonna do um, before I start this step is I'm gonna give you a suggestion to make sure your canvas is dry. <laughs> so you can either take that extra long break if you'd like to, or you can find some kind of fanning method like your dirty paper towel or blowing on it, or you can do as I did and just take a blow dryer and blow dry your canvas makes it a whole heck of a lot easier to draw on it when it's dry. So I'm going to do uh, the, a portion of my outline of my sun in a, like a quarter of a circle. It's gonna take up this type of um, section in through here, and then my reflection will be, of course, down in the water area. So I've made a couple of markers. I'll tell you where they are, and then we can just kind of connect them. So I've made a marker right about here, which is about seven and a half inches from the top of my canvas. If this is about your halfway mark, 
Really, you just want to go up a couple of inches from there. You can make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then here is, I would say this is about an inch and a half to two inches above my horizon line. And if this is the center of my canvas left to right, I'm over from that just uh, maybe an inch, inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to connect these two in a semicircle type of way. When I, this is gonna be my starting point and my ending point, but my ending point, I'm gonna have this coming out a little bit as if part of the, the sun has already dropped below the, um, the horizon line. So I'm just gonna kind of take this and I'm watching my dot over here and I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit further and then just kind of curve it back in. And of course you can just keep modifying this. This is the beautiful part about using chalk is you can just kind of keep tweaking it until it's the shape that you want. And then down in the water, I've got mine kind of, I, you know, right directly below it, but what I'm gonna do is I've got a marker right about in through here. So this, if you travel straight down from here, it's, I've just got mine a little bit to the right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give myself a really kind of just jagged, uneven type of a line, something like that. And it's going to fade into my, my water area, but I'm gonna just kind of give myself this little bit of a line in through here, just to know where I want those brighter colors to go. And that is all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. We're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our sun and its reflection. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. My dominant colors are gonna be white and yellow, but I'll also definitely use a little orange and I might use a little bit of red too if I have to. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first start by putting a really light or thin layer of white paint on my sun. So I'm gonna take my big bristle brush and I'm bringing it all the way to the edge of my chalk mark. And you might find that yours ends up growing a little bit during this process, but don't feel that you have to have your edges completely perfect. This is, you know, you could have soft edges around your sun if you wanted to, but I'm trying to do a nice thin layer so that way my paint will dry pretty quickly. Oops, sorry, I, when I go close along these circle edges, I tend to not talk as much. It, it, my brain has to concentrate. So hold on one second. <laughs> so after I get this little edge done here, I'm bringing this just about down to the bottom of my chalk mark. But I was saying, um, I'm doing a thin layer of paint because I really want it to dry pretty darn quickly because I'm gonna build this sun in layers. So as I'm getting down to where it's meeting this sunset area, my chalk mark comes down to here, but I don't necessarily need to bring the white all the way down to there. Right about here is where I'm gonna start to just fade it into those sunset colors without having a firm line at the bottom. So it doesn't have to look perfect right now, but what I'm doing is I'm using my brush that doesn't have a lot of paint on it right now to get, start this transition into the, um, the setting atmosphere. So I'm just gonna get this coat on as it's drying. We're gonna go do the same thing in the reflection. So that's gonna set for a minute and dry. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect coat at this point. So I'm reloading my brush with a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna start at the bottom of my reflection and put some white paint on here. And I don't need a lot in this reflection because the reflection is actually not going to translate the, the true white color. I'm using the white as a, I'm gonna call it like a primer coat for the yellow that I'm gonna want to be represented in this reflection. And I'm not bringing it through the whole thing, I'm just bringing it pretty strong down at the bottom and then just letting my brush kind of run out of paint as it's going through this area in through here. So now that I've got that on there, this is drying. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and Make sure that you got it nice and dry. It doesn't have to be 
100%, but squeeze out as much water as you can. I'm gonna pick up just yellow paint. So no white, just a little bit of yellow paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a glow around the outside of my sun. So I have the yellow paint on my brush and you might bump into your sun a little bit by accident. And if that happens, don't worry about it because we're gonna be coming back to repaint um, another layer on our, on our sun anyways. So you can see how this is just giving me an atmospheric kind of glow right around my, my sun. And if you wanted to, you could also bring this yellow, if you didn't feel this was strong enough, you could bring this yellow kind of out a little bit into this area as well. So that's, that'll be a visual preference on your part if you want that to be any stronger. If your sun is still wet, white paint in through there, just keep letting it rest for a minute. We can go and finish the reflection while that is still drying. So right now I just still have that yellow on my brush. I'm gonna bring some of it right on top of this white here. Even if this white was wet, I'm okay with that. I'm just really kind of introducing the yellow on top of it. And then I'm gonna get this to fade into that, um, the red area. So just some of this yellow is going around the edges on top of that white that we had done. And now I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of orange to kind of get this to intermingle with some of those colors. And then if I needed to, I could also put a little bit of red in here as well. But you're really just looking for a transition from the light color to the dark color in through here. And then once you've accomplished that, then I'm going to wash and dry my brush one more time and we'll go and finish that uh, sun. I keep wanting to call it a moon. I'm not quite sure why, but if I accidentally call it a moon, then I apologize in advance. So again, washing and giving my brush a really good squeeze into my paper towel to make sure that I don't have much water on it. And I'm picking up just a little bit of white paint to give myself this second layer to the sun, <laughs> not the moon, and I'm bringing it all the way to the edges. This is where I could clean up the edges if I needed to, if I had bumped into them with the, with the yellow glow that was around the edges. And then once I cross over into the sunset area, I'm gonna start introducing yellow, or right as I'm getting to it. So the yellow is going to illuminate my sun and it's gonna look awesome. But I'm bringing this white down just a little bit farther. I'm bringing the white down pretty much to the horizon and then I'm going to overlap that yellow on top of it. So again, I'm not using a ton of paint just to get this on here, make sure that it's nice and bright white and just by layering these thin layers, it will, it will end up really nice and bright. So now that I've got that, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm picking up some yellow paint and I'm gonna get this to go right on top of it. So it's gonna be super duper bright. You're gonna get it to go all the way to the edge of my sun in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit of orange at the for the next transition in a second, but right now I'm just getting this yellow to blend up into my white. So I'm using a very light brush stroke at this point. I'm not pushing very hard, and I want this yellow to kind of come up a bit higher than these colors in through here. So I'm bringing it up almost halfway into the sun. And you might want yours to go higher or lower or whatever you'd like it to be is totally fine. Now what I'm gonna do, just make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that orange and get this to transition from the yellow to the red that is down below it. So this, when you're done, I'm going for a nice gradual transition from the yellow to the orange to the red. So if you felt that you needed to pick up a little bit more red in order to get those colors to transition or to blend in with one another, then feel free to do so. Like I feel like I might want a touch of red on my brush just to make sure that these talk well together and to hide my little chalk mark over here on the side. It might be a great place for me to strate strategically put the end of my ship <laughs> but or my sailboat. And then once you get this done, if you have any little tweaks that you wanna do, feel free to do them. But we're gonna be switching to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our boat and the two sails. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using just black paint. So I'm gonna give you a couple of markers, we'll connect the dots and then by the time we're done, we'll have ourselves a beautifully shaped sailboat. So I'm just gonna put some black paint on my brush. Gonna give you a couple of markers here. So my first marker is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna come from my horizon down maybe about an inch, inch and a half. Just make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then I'm gonna come over almost halfway in my canvas. So if this is about the halfway point, I'm about an inch shy of that. Make myself a little bit of a marker in through there. And then what I'm gonna do is from my horizon line, I'm gonna come up maybe about an inch and a half to two inches, about this, this far, right about in through here. Make myself a little marker. And then I'm gonna come in about, I would say another three and a half inches to the right and come up about an inch. We have another mark here. Follow this line all the way until you're about an inch shy of your sun. Put yourself a mark here. I'm gonna put another mark really close to the edge of our sun in a diagonal way, just like that. And then we need two more markers. So I'm gonna come straight up from this marker in through here. I'm gonna go straight up, 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 up till I'm about here. So this is higher than my sun and it's maybe about a third of the way down my canvas. Somewhere in through here, make myself a little marker. And then the other marker I'm gonna make is directly up from this one. And I'm almost at the top of my canvas. So just travel straight, 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 straight up. And you're gonna stop right about, I don't know, a half of an inch away from the edge of your canvas. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight markers. <laughs> now we just gotta connect the dots and we'll be all set. So I'm gonna take the bottom two and I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a marker. I'm gonna just connect those two dots like that. I'm gonna connect this one to here with an arcing type of a motion or type of a line. So I'm gonna take this and just come in like this. I'm gonna connect this one to this one with an arcing motion coming down. So I'm gonna take this and go like this. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this mark to this mark, like that. I'm gonna give myself a little, um, I think this is gonna be the life preserver kind of boat over here that's just sticking out the edge. So I'm gonna take from this mark and just give myself a little curve. I'm gonna give myself, we'll call this the little rowboat that's hanging off the side of the big boat in case of emergencies. So bringing this down, maybe, I don't know, maybe about oh, three quarters of an inch and just bringing that in there. You can just color that in while we're here. And then I'm going to give myself two vertical lines. So from these two points directly down to um, the to the boat. So these don't necessarily have to be super duper straight. If they're a little bit um, diagonal, that's okay. That'll just mean that the wind has taken the sail and kind of bent it a little bit. So don't feel the need to make this um, exactly perfect. And I'm gonna have mine a little bit pointier up at the top. So I might, might start up just a little bit higher just to give myself that little tiny point. And then as I come down towards my um, ship or my sailboat, I can push my brush a little bit harder and that's gonna make this pole a little bit wider as it comes down towards there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on here. This one's gonna be pretty wide when it meets this, when it meets my boat. So I'm just gonna start right at the tippy top and then as I come down, I'm gonna start pushing harder and harder and harder with my brush and you can see how my line is getting pretty darn wide. I'm shooting for here, but if I go off to the left or to the right of it a little bit, I'm totally okay with that. That's just gonna make it look, see I just landed a little to the left of it. It's just gonna make it look oh so much more natural, like we're looking at it from an angle of sorts. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of fiddle with that until I've got it in the shape that I want. I'm going to color in this whole big part in through here with some black paint. So I just loaded up my brush with some black paint and I'm gonna get this section colored in. And then we'll do some two, we'll do two basic shapes for 
the sales that are coming off of those posts that we just put. I put this bottom line pretty horizontal and flat to indicate that the boat has submerged itself into the water. If you, if you round that bottom, um, it'll look like the boat is almost floating on top of the water, no pun intended, levitating on top of the water. Um, so when you're doing boats, if you want them to really look like they're in the water, just on that bottom profile of them, just make sure that you have some sort of flat spot or a horizontal flat spot that will tell the viewer that the boat is in fact partially underwater. And then once I've got this, I'm gonna make myself a couple of sails. So I'm gonna have this left, my wind is coming from the right, it's blowing my sails to the left. So I'm gonna have this one partially off of my canvas. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna come up almost to the top of my, um, of my pole and I'm gonna just bring this down something like this and then I'm gonna bump it out to, I would say maybe somewhere like that. It's gonna be partially off of my canvas outside of the viewing range. I'm gonna put the bottom of it somewhere maybe coming in through here. So I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of a, uh, of a footprint to follow here. Gonna have this a little bit more narrow in through here. And then I'm gonna have the other side of it kind of coming down close to my pole. My hand, I'm trying to keep out of the way, but still trying to paint it the way that I want to. So somewhere like this, and then it's gonna, I'm gonna bump it out over in through here, and then maybe get this to curve back in through here. And then I'm just gonna color this left section in with black because this is gonna be the actual sail part itself. And I suppose you could have done this with your chalk and just drawn them out first to get the shape that you want, but sometimes I just go for it as an artist. <laughs> and then on this one, this one's gonna be a smaller one. So I think I'm gonna come up, I would say maybe almost as high as you have here and give myself just the little, the little bottom part of it. Some, something like that. And then up at the top here, I'll get this to just kind of come, you know, in a gentle kind of curve and curve into here. And then I'll do the same thing. I'm getting mine to be more narrow at the top. And this one is definitely kind of more narrow than the one on the left, but you could certainly make yours into whatever type of thickness or shape that you want. And then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got the main shape of your boat and your sails on here, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the silhouette of all of the little details on the sailboat. So I'm using my small brush and I'm just gonna be using black paint with some water. So I'll have some nice fluid lines. These are gonna be all of the ties and the knobs and those strings and all of the other technical things on a sailboat that I have no idea what they're called and I don't even really know where they're located. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, kind of freestyle the things that I have visually seen, which will be, I think they're called crow's nests the um, little spot maybe halfway up a sail, um, the, the pole where the lookout happens <laughs> from the pirates. <laughs> I doubt that's what it's really called. But, um, so just a little area in through there. I'll put a bunch of strings coming out from the pole and the sails, maybe some handles of sorts at the bottom of the sails, maybe some areas where you would tie off ropes um, that you can see the profile of at the top of the ship. So you can really have fun with freestyling this and making it into your own uh, sailboat or ship by adding these extra little details to it. On the ropes, I'll probably have some little clasps where they might all be either tied together or clamped together so they don't, so they stay under control. Um, again, not quite sure, maybe that's called a no, I was gonna make up a word there or use a word I thought it was, but I don't think that's what it is. But anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm using my small brush 
I'm using black paint and I'm dropping in a couple of uh, drops of water so I can make this a nice fluid consistency, almost like ink. So that way I can really have a nice pointy brush. I can get a nice long fluid brush stroke. And then once I've got my paint in the consistency that I want, I'm going to put my bigger areas in first. So I'll put um, that crow's nest of sorts in through here. So this is just going to be a, a rectangle for me of sorts. You can certainly, again, make yours into whatever style that you would like. I think I'm going to have maybe a little something going on in through here. I'm going to have a little um, area in through here. Maybe this is where some of the ropes get tied off when they're not in use or maybe it's a seat or something. I'm gonna have some, maybe a handle of sorts coming off the edge of this sail. Maybe this has, I don't know, maybe a connector piece in through here. My bigger pieces, let's see what else. I, want, I think I want something coming off of here. Like maybe this is a little tie of sorts for this boat in through there. Maybe I've got, I don't think I want a little po um, pointier part up on the top of this, like that. So you can reshape your boat as you're going along. Maybe I'll have another one of these little tie things in through here. Maybe I've got some bigger structure halfway up this pole as well. Hmm, I think those are the probably the biggest objects I'm going to do. And then I'm going to just start to make a whole bunch of strings coming off. Oh, maybe I think I want, I think I want to add this a little bit more. A whole bunch of strings. Oh, maybe, maybe something in through here. <laughs> I'm like, I think I want another mark in through here. So mark making, that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to make lots of strings coming down. And to me, they would definitely be centrally located here and just kind of coming off and either meeting the boat or meeting the the support system in through here. Um, these ones could end up over here. These ones could end up over here. So have fun with it. You don't have to make them um, perfect. I'm going to start maybe over here on the left hand side and just give myself some sort of line that comes in through here. And some of them can be thinner, some can be thicker. I'm going to probably, once I've got some on here, I'm just going to really freestyle and just give myself the illusion of a bunch of them in certain areas just so it, um, I don't know, gives that illusion of a mass of um, several lines, so to speak. I'm trying to be very cautious about my um, messy hand running through wet black paint. So if that happens, uh, like there. <laughs> that, oh, that wasn't my hand. That was my, or my hand running through anything. That was just me going wobbly a little bit. And if you make your lines a little more wobbly than you want to, it's okay. You know, you can always, if you, if you wanted to, if they weren't great for you, you could take a, like a little flat brush with a touch of water while it's still wet. And you can just kind of thin them out while they're still wet. Um, that's a great tool for making a, a wider line thinner, but you've got to get to it while it's still wet. So I ha I'm using just a little flat brush that's pulling these um, lines into a thinner type of style, but you could certainly, you know, just, and I'll, I'll probably put another thin one on top of that just so give the, uh, a good illusion there. But you know, when you're doing these very slender lines, having the right amount of moisture on your brush or the right amount of paint on your brush, having the right length of bristles, all that good stuff. It's very difficult to get them to um, do what you want them to. So you, if you've got these um, quick fixes in your tool belt, that will help you to just fix on, on the fly. So I'm just kind of reloading my brush, making sure that I have enough moisture on it. So even if I have to add a little bit of water to my brush, that will, um, that will allow me to get these longer, more slender lines. And sometimes just going fast um, will help you to 
do that as well and not being terribly concerned about making every single line perfectly straight, the same thickness. I just got some black paint on my canvas because my hand was dirty. And so there's my quick fix again with that. So just a little bit of water on this flat brush can get my, well, that one must've been sitting there for too long. So, you know, just feel it out. Sometimes having your canvas laying down flat, that would help you to get yourself a um, more slender line. I also will tend to, um, I've got my pinky, resting on my canvas, which is allowing me to not accidentally push too hard with my brush. That's keeping my brush of a similar um, firmness as I'm coming down my canvas. So, you know, I've got my little tricks and if you look at my painting closely, my lines are not perfect, especially the one that I had to correct over there. But you can, you know, find your, find your groove, find your rhythm, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of watching where I want it to go to. So I think I want this one to go over into this vicinity. So I'm gonna kind of keep my eye on the prize, which is this direction over in through here. And if you made it a little bit more wobbly than you wanted it to, you could always just put several more little lines next to it, which could um, visually make it look a little bit straighter. So, you know, those are little tricks too that you can do. And you know, the biggest thing is, is we're not trying to make this look like a photograph. So we're just trying to give the illusion of this as being this really cool, you know, sailboat that's setting and, you know, going off into the um, beautiful landscape. And, you know, so of course you can modify it to be whatever dreamy, romantic boat that you would like it to be. And I'm just gonna get a couple to come on over in through here. And then once I've got my strings in order, which I'm gonna do maybe just a couple more in through here, I'm gonna put these, oh, let me just give myself another one or two over in this area too. See if I can do this without, without doing it um, too wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe one or two coming down in through here. There we go. And then I'm going to do a, a big one next to it. So this one is going to look like it's the brace of them all. There we go. There we go. That makes sense to me. And then I'm going to put a couple of little, I'm going to call them little um, knobs or connectors that are going to hold these, some of these strings together. So I'm just going to do like a little almost different size polka dots going down some of these strings. And that's going to, again, it's just another little visual effect that will tell the viewer that, oh, maybe there's something more to these um, sales and you're just giving it, giving it more information. Even if it, we're not going for a photorealistic style here, we're still providing some of those photorealistic elements that are going to allow the viewer to understand that the, you know, that there might be something more to this than just um, you know, an illustration, a quick illustration that we've done. And if you wanted to, you could bring these tips up a little bit higher. If you wanted these to be really nice and pointy up at the tops, so you can certainly bring those up. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it, adding as much um, detail as you want to. I think I want a couple of these to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more volume in some of these. And then we're going to be using um, our let's use our uh, small brush for the next step. So once you've got these on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the highlights on our sailboat. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, orange, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be a very subtle step. I don't need it to be very powerful. This is, mo the majority of this boat is in the silhouette, but I do wanna add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of highlights to it, so that's what I'm gonna do. And if you need to, if you go too, too bright, you can always bring back some of the black, but I'm going to be 
taking the colors from the sun and just allowing them to highlight the right side of the boat and some of the pieces as well as maybe illuminating the canvas of the sails a little bit. So I'm going to start on the main part of the boat in through here. So I'm going to put brown, orange, yellow, and white all on my brush at the same time. What I did was I just dipped my brush brown, orange, yellow, and a little bit of white all on my brush at the same time. So this way, again, it's just going to provide a really nice natural look to it. And I'm going on this right hand side. So I'm just going to kind of slowly give myself a little bit of an outline. Now I have some three dimensional pieces to contend with. So I'm just going to kind of skip those a little bit, bring this down towards the bottom of my boat. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of brown to get this to um, blend in with the side of the boat a bit. But you could certainly, if you wanted yours to be a little bit more um, noticeable, you could certainly bring in more of the, um, the orange, yellow, and white. It's going to be a visual preference on your part, how dramatic you want this highlight to be. So I'm just kind of rubbing this in like this, and I'm going to get it to fade into my dark area in through here. I'm going to give a tiny bit up at the top of this edge in through here. And then I'm just going to take my brush and rub it into the side of the boat. So it will end up a little bit darker when it dries. So if as it's drying, if it ends up too dark for you, you just come back in and illuminate it a little bit more with more intense highlight um, colors. So you can certainly fiddle with that. I'm going to do the same thing with this little piece on here. So again, I'm starting with brown, orange, yellow, and white, but a little bit less on my brush because I have a very little tiny area to go here. I'm going to put it right on the edge in through here, maybe pull a little bit towards that top, and then I'm going to just wiggle my brush and get it to blend in with the side of this little rowboat. And you can bring it farther back, you know, if you want to make sure the viewer understands that this piece is in front of this piece, then you could certainly illuminate it a little bit more, make it look a little bit brighter so the viewer can understand that it is in fact a separate piece from this. And then I'm just going to get it to kind of fade off into the distance back in through here with whatever remnants on my brush. And of course you could certainly pick, use a bigger brush and you could make this whole side of the ship as light as you want and be your, your call. And for my bigger pieces, I'm going to do the same thing. So orange, yellow, rust, or orange, yellow, brown, and white. And I'm going to pick my, my pieces that I want to illuminate and they're going to be illuminated on the right hand side. So I can take this little piece in through here, give it a little bit of a highlight. And on these, I'm not necessarily needing to blend it as much as I did with um, that in through there. Really, I'm just kind of giving it this um, uh, subtle type of highlight so people can understand that it is a little three-dimensional type of object. And you can tweak your highlights. Maybe you want yours more orange. Maybe you want yours more um, white. So depending on how dramatic you want it, you can adjust that um, the, that four color combination into whatever is visually the most appealing to you. And you can kind of keep tweaking these as much as you want. I'm going to go ahead and do this little um, big area because these are the biggest areas for me, something like that. I don't know what this piece is. We'll just put a little highlight in on it. And then for my sails, so for these little highlight areas, um, I'm not really going to highlight my strings, but I highlighted the um, structural pieces. My sails, I'm going to do those with more orange and yellow on my brush. You could do it with red, you could do it, you know, any color combination you want. I'm really just looking to tell the viewer that these, these canvas parts of the sail have taken on a little bit of that sun setting color or you know or you can see the sun setting color through the piece of canvas so really whatever is um again visually appealing to you maybe you want your sails to be purple <laughs> you know you can they don't have to take on the color from the 
the sun. They could they could just be whatever color you wanted them to be naturally, be it purple or blue, and then just maybe these little lighter, every now and again, little light areas that will help to sell the story of it being illuminated by that setting sun. And I'm just gonna maybe put a couple of little highlights here and there. And then you can just kind of keep tweaking this all you want. Again, as it dries, it will get darker because you have that, um, you have that black base underneath, which is definitely, I just used a little bit of red here, um, which is definitely, the black base will definitely make these much more um, dark as they dry, but giving it that real nice natural look to it. And then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step, so once you've got all of your little highlights. I'm putting a little bit of red over here on the right hand side to give it a little more punch of this sunset, um, this sunset dreaminess to it. And then um, I'm going to be utilizing my medium brush for the next step if I can ever stop this step. <laughs> there we go. I'm done. And so medium brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the reflection of our boat in the water down in through here. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are predominantly black, but I'll probably be using some red, yellow, maybe a little brown, but mostly black. I'm gonna start with black. So I got my medium brush. I'm gonna use water, a little bit of watered down black paint so that way it flows nice and easy for me. When I do this, I don't want to cover up all of this color in through here because I want it to give the illusion that this is just rippled water, so therefore you would see some flecks of this water in between the reflection itself. And I don't want to turn this whole area down here black, so I'm gonna have just a piece of this as if it's kind of skewed and squashed. So even though this is this tall, I don't want this whole height of the base of the boat to take this up because then I won't see any of the details from the um, from the sails. So I want to capture some of that so I'm going to skew or shorten my reflection a little bit. So I've got black paint on my brush. I'm going to just go across the bottom a little bit just so I can start this reflection with um, a, a starting point I guess and I'm kind of messing up the line where the boat enters into the water. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of give myself this profile in through here, but I'm not going up very high. I'm only gonna go up maybe, I would say, to about here, so maybe about an inch away from there. And then it's gonna kick itself back down in through here. So I'm just brought up this little corner and I'm just doing a little left to right motion and that's about the extent of the height that I'm gonna give the, the main boat part its reflection. So I need this little piece to be represented a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from that or in through here and just give myself a really little rough kind of reflection like that, that will represent that. And then I'm going to, for my own brain purposes, I'm going to start with these posts because they're good identifying markers. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna come straight down from here and then I'm going to give myself just a little um, a wiggly type of line. And I do kind of want it to almost, you know, stop a little bit before the end of my canvas. So I'm just kind of bringing my little wiggle line, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one because I know this one's way taller than this one, so this one will just go off of my canvas down below. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna have my wiggle mark like this, and this is just coming straight down, and it's a little bit wider than that one because it is up there as well, and it's gonna go right, I'm gonna bring this here, there we go. It's gonna go right off the bottom of my canvas. And then I have my sails and stuff to contend with, so, what I, I, and again, I don't need this to be a mirror reflection, it's just ripply water, so I'm being very carefree with my reflection, but I, I want certain things to be represented, so I've got my sail, so I'm gonna come down in through here, so this is gonna be a little bit wider down at the bottom. I just had too much paint on my brush, so I wiped it off on my paper towel. A little bit wider at the bottom, 
and then it comes away from the post a little bit and then maybe it just kind of fades off up into the top and then I've got the same thing going on over here. This goes a little away from the boat a bit in through here and then this whole kind of side area is the um, is the sail. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of black in through here and get this entire area to kind of just be represented with um, with the dark paint. And I want my water to look like it's dark and deep over here too. So I'm going to, now that I've got those pieces kind of in place, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of red and maybe a touch of brown paint just to kind of intermingle these colors in through here. I want this bottom area to be pretty darn dark. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep fiddling with it. If I had little bright highlights over here, then I would use maybe a little white and brown to get a, a little bit of that brighter reflection over on the edge in through here, maybe a touch on the tip here. If you can identify those um, brighter areas up top and get them to translate down below, that'd be awesome. If your sail was really nice and red you could definitely put a little bit more red in the reflection and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you feel that it, it, it's translating as much as you want it to you could bring more bright colors into the reflection you could make it duller looking i got it pretty darn dark again over on this side just simply because i feel like the sun is over there it's probably a little darker over here so you can keep playing with it all you want, and then we're gonna be utilizing our, oh, one more thing, I'm just noticing now, the edge of my sun in through here, if, if you want this to really pop out a lot in this reflection, you could come back in around the edge of this reflection, and you could put a little bit more darkness right around the edge of it. That will get that sun reflection to pop out a little bit more as well. Even if you just brought a little bit of red and maybe a touch of brown down towards the bottom of the um, water, that would make that reflection pop out a real lot. So if it's not a necessary thing, if yours already looks totally awesome, then I wouldn't touch it. Um, but if you if you wanted that um, little further illusion to happen. You could just darken that water um, down around the edges. And then we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your reflection all in place, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use black paint. I'm signing mine over in the bottom left. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to do is totally up to you. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful nautical painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.